Today I'm going to be talking with you about the subject of power and specifically how narcissists tend to gravitate towards that, kind of like a, a bee does to honey. They just want to have it as part of their, their need, that's part of their source that makes them feel like they're a real somebody. And as we talk about this, I want to remind ourselves of the, uh, some of the primary ingredients what, uh, that we refer to when we talk about narcissism. A high level of control, low levels of empathy, exploitive, manipulative behavior, the need to be superior, an inability to receive input, um, uh, having what I call a alternate view of reality. They just don't think like you and I do, and they remember things a bit differently than you and I do. They can have an ability to make a positive impression for a while in public, but then as time goes by, people begin thinking, you know, there's something going on behind the scenes there that you're not letting me in on. If we had to use an overarching idea that describes what the narcissist is about, we would go back to that word, power. They really want to feel like they have a powerful hold on you. Now, I want you to just uh, think of some of the common behaviors that you typically identify with when you are engaging with the narcissist. They can belittle you, they can be critical, uh, they can be demanding, they may, be, they may invalidate what you have to say, they may be coercive, they may go into shutdown communication, they can be stubborn, they must be right, there can be a rigidity and inflexibility. All of those are power words. And when you begin to think about it, you know, you, you might want to ask that narcissist, exactly what are you trying to accomplish here? And if they were honest with you, which that's not a real strong likelihood, but if they were honest with you, they would say, oh, there are several things I'm wanting to accomplish. Uh, I want you to be afraid of me. Uh, they can be very intimidating. It's like, you're here to be my subordinate. And if I can get you to question your own decency or your own good thinking, I'm all for that. I, I want you to fear me and I want you to live in subordination. Or when you ask, what are you trying to control? It's like, well, I'm just trying to stay in that upper position. Uh, I have an agenda and I want to make sure that my plans play out the way I say it wants to be, it needs to be. So we need to have me as the chairman of the board and well, <laughs> there's not enough room for thoughts and impressions from you. Or what are they trying to accomplish? Well, I want to take your freedom away from you. I don't want you choosing who you're going to be. Let me do the choosing for you. What are they trying to accomplish? Well, they're trying to impress themselves. It's like, I'm pretty special here, aren't I? And not very many people have the, the kind of insight into life as I have. And so you, you need to have somebody as smart as I am. I mean, look at how unique I am. And I have such a, a special way of, of playing things out in the world. You need to just listen to me and everything's gonna be just fine. All of that is part of their power brokers kind of mentality. That's how they rationalize to themselves why it's okay for them to treat you in such an overwhelming kind of way. Now, one of the huge things that distinguishes their understanding of power, and I do believe that uh, narcissists have a very um, rotten, if you will, understanding of what power is about, they want to control the things that you find to be important. To, to yourself. They want to control what you want. They want to control what you need. And if you say, well, I have a different perspective, then their basic reaction is something to the effect of, well, you didn't filter that through me now, did you? And so when they believe that they have a handle on who you are from the inside out, then they can feel really satisfied. Now, really, when you look at this, and I know some of you have given me some feedback when I've said that uh, narcissists can be very fear-based, and you say, no, I don't think it's about fear. Oh, yes, it is. See, they're afraid to let you be you. It's like, well, if you're what you are, I don't know if I can handle that. I don't know if I can navigate through the differences that might, that might generate. Uh, they, they may be afraid of how you'll decide if, if you have a preference on the way that you want to spend money or how you want to manage your time or how you want to prioritize other relationships. It's like, mm, I don't know if I can deal with whatever you're going to come up with. So why don't we just say, you know, stop it. I'm going to be in charge and they're going to use all sorts of power moves on you, threats and, uh, and coercion, things of that nature. And to that narcissistic power broker, 
You are an object. You are a hindrance. You are a tool to be used. Now, that's a pretty sad way for people to go through life, is it not? And as, as you watch them, I, I, I suspect that you'll be able to look inside yourself and say, yeah, and as they use that power mindset over me, then I find myself becoming way too defensive. I find myself living in fear where I have to just very guardedly decide, well, how do I have to justify who I am? And is it okay for me to think this way and do that? Uh, sometimes you can just feel totally uh, intimidated. You can feel trapped. And sure enough, uh, these individuals can it wield power of a sort. Uh, many of you have talked about how the narcissist in your life is going to you know, make you feel boxed in because they, uh, they try to uh, turn family opinion against you or work opinion against you or they manage money or schedules or they, they can be bullies in the way that they deal with things. So the question I have for you is, how do you react inwardly in the way that you deal with this? And too many of you, uh, I, I suspect, would be able to say, well, what I do is I fight power with power. And it, when you do that, then the narcissist is just going to think, game on. I mean, how many times have you had non-productive arguments with that person where you have something really forceful to say and that, that narcissist can say, oh, if you want to argue, I'll argue with you as long as you need, or they'll go into the shutdown mode or anything to make you feel like a little person. There are two alternatives that I want you to consider as much, much better ways to live life, different paths that you can go down. And I'm just going to tell you straight up, it goes straight to the gentle place. Um, too many times people uh, get caught up in uh, tit for tat. You know, you give me an insult, I'll give you an insult right back. You treat me lousy, I'm going to treat you lousy right back. I'm, want, I'm wanting to challenge you to think in a very other kind of way. Now, well, what we're wanting to do is let's trade in our word power and talk about influence. You see, the, that narcissist who thinks they're in a powerful place, well, maybe they can get their way. And maybe they can thwart some of the plans that you have. But in the long run, how many people are saying, yeah, I want to keep hanging out with that guy or that woman? <clears throat> no. People think if that's all you have to offer, your power play kind of stuff, get me out of here, and folks want to run. To think about having influence, what does that entail? Now, two primary ingredients. Uh, I want you to think about having a sense of humility in your life, and I want you to think about what it means to be loving in the way that you engage. Now, uh, as soon as I throw out that word humility, some of you are thinking, well, I don't know if I want to be a humble person because that uh, nar narcissistic person is going to walk all over me. When you think of a humble person, what comes to mind? And, and too many times people think of somebody that's self-effacing and they, uh, they just uh, probably are a pretty nice person, but they allow themselves to be walked on. Th that's not humility. That's just called doormatism. Humility implies that you understand life doesn't revolve around me. I'm not the center of the universe. Now, the narcissist in their power moves, they think they're almost God over you, and uh, they, they've rationalized why it's so important for them to be uh, the be-all and end-all. The humble individual says, you know, let's, let's start with a certain amount of self-restraint. Uh, I, I want to learn how to be a conscientious person. Uh, I want to be tuned in to other individuals. I want to factor in the needs and feelings of other people in such a way that they feel like, uh, like it's not about me, but there's a sense of community that's here. Would people describe you as that kind of person? Now, there is one characteristic that's part of humility that you may not have thought about, and that is having assertiveness. Humble people will assert themselves. You know, if you and I have a conflict between the two of us, and if I love you and if I care about what happens to our relationship, I'm not just going to go silent and say nothing like, mm, I don't want to talk about that because it's not going to be any good. The assertive individual says, no, I owe it to me and I owe it to our relationship to speak up. So uh, humble people can have boundaries and they can set stipulations. Uh, the difference between them and that power broker narcissist is I don't feel the need to b demean someone while I'm doing that. I need to speak about who I am and what I believe and what my stipulations will be, but hopefully the other person can walk away with their dignity intact. That's the way healthy people think. 
And then when we talk about having a sense of love, we're talking about someone that, uh, that emphasizes things like affirmation and goodness and kindness and affection and tenderness. You see, I operate on the assumption that gentleness is strength. If that narcissist comes at me and they have all sorts of condemning and judgmental thoughts that they're wanting to, to throw at me, and then if I respond with a sense of humility that says, uh, I understand that's where you are, I can't particularly do anything about what you feel, but I need you to know that I, I'm comfortable with the decisions that I make. And I'm going to go ahead and stand in what I believe to be a wise and proper way of living. That's humility. Don't feel the need to argue, but I can have that sense of, of goodness and decency. And then, if it is possible, uh, it leaves open the possibility for love to be present. Now, I, I'm under no illusion that love and humility, the two better alternatives, are, I'm under no illusion that those two characteristics are going to change the narcissist. Sometimes people just simply are what they are. And uh, when that's the case, you have to decide what you're going to do with them. Do you relate with them and engage with them, but with minimal expectations and you, you do the best you can and then you apply your healthiest characteristics with people that really truly understand what, uh, what to do with it? Sometimes you have to completely disengage altogether. But uh, it, it disturbs me when I hear of people engaging with narcissistic people and they come up with hate and bitterness and tension toward that narcissist. All that tells me is the power broker still has power over you. Uh, if you're going to break away from the narcissist power uh, grip, then break away by changing what's up here. Break away by changing your, your inner um, motives and your inner intentions and initiatives. Be known as somebody that truly cares about the dignity of other individuals. And if the narcissist simply can't join you, then that means that there's one less person that you can have in your inner circle of intimates. But at the same time, you want to have the sense that says, I understand what my cleaner alternatives are. I feel no need to be overpowering or overwhelming to someone else. I want folks to engage with me because I allow them the freedom and the dignity to be what they are. And that, to me, is the best way to refute uh, the way that the power-grabbing narcissist is going to engage with you on. Uh, they may never master love. They may never enter into humility. But uh, the good news is you, not the power-broken narcissist, uh, you get to decide uh, what's going to uh, guide you and lead you in the way that you engage with others. And I'm hoping that you're going to choose the way of decency and goodness.